Hey guys, it's the Fly Young Gentleman here. And I did it, guys. I made the pledge. Uh, I'm now $400 plus dollars into Star Citizen. Uh, here we go. Got the Phoenix. Now, if you're wondering why I got it, I'm going to have a lot of explanation about why I got it. And we're also going to talk about my organization. Uh, yep, I'm going to start one. Um, we're going to talk all about it. That's all going to be the end. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of uh, Vanduul Swarm again while I go and uh, talk about all that stuff to keep your eyes entertained. But for now, we're going to do a quick review of the ship. So, first thing you're going to notice is that it's gray. Like silvery, whitish gray. I really like it, actually. Uh, it looks nice. There is no PBR in the hangar yet, though. Which is a shame, but it's coming. So that's why the lighting may not look that great on it. That's just because there's no PBR in the hangar. But once we go inside, you're really going to see it shine. Literally. Now, going to some exterior features. Um, first thing you notice is that Obviously, the color is different. And we're going to walk up here. Now, you see this P-52 Merlin? This is not going to be there when the ship is done. Now, when the ship is done, it's getting a P-72 Archimedes fighter. The same people make it, Kruger, but it's a different ship, and it's apparently much better. And uh, it can go for longer distances, which can be extremely useful if you, if you want to go through a jump point that the constellation cannot fit through, you know, an undiscovered one, then you can take your little ship and go take a little one-man journey and go map it. Very cool. But they said that there, if you read the brochure, I can link in the description, that every ship is going to ship with a P-52 Merlin as of right now, while uh, the P-72 Archimedes is produced. Now... We cannot go in like we can on the Andromeda to the cargo bay. Now, if you're interested in seeing what it kind of looks like, it might be different in this one because there is going to be something else it comes with called the Lynx Rover. Now, many people have a lot of speculation whether it's going to be better or a more luxury version of the Ursa Rover. We're not sure. We have no idea. There's no pictures, nothing leaked about it at all. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get inside. Oh, also, really quickly, there is no turret mount here. Now, a lot of people are saying that this little area here is used for the quote-unquote sensor-dampened cargo area. Now, this is how I know it's not true. Stay tuned. Now, if you go through the forums, there was, I believe, a game developer. I forgot his name. I might be able to dig it up. Um, he lists a giant Q&A on the Constellation Phoenix. Now, he said that, and he does even say in the brochure, that there will be a bottom-mounted turret here. So, how it's going to work? God knows. But there is going to be one. That is not the cargo dump in censored area. Uh, it, is, it is where a turret is going to go. The ship is not finished, and you're going to see that as we go through it. Now, let's enter the ship. First thing you're going to notice off the bat, everything looks very shiny and beautiful. Uh, we have these beautiful wood veneer paneling. Look at this, high fidelity, high detail. Very nice. Very high detail. And this is the little area you can tell it comes up with hinges. But I'm telling you guys, he said there would be, and even the brochure said there would be a turret mounted under there. Maybe it's just not finished. Maybe it's got a special kind of turret. And if you can tell, these look like telescoping arms. Maybe this folds up into it. And you can keep it stored away up inside the turret. Very cool, though. Now, one thing you're going to notice, and I'll go back to this seat, is this very beautifully, with the PPR, you can't see it too well, uh, very beautifully different grain on every single seat panel. Uh, leather. Very high detail, high fidelity. And we're going to go over to this right here. Uh, if it wants to turn around, boom. Boom. Once again, very high detail, very high fidelity. Every panel is a different grain of leather. Very, very nice to see that. And you have these beautiful lights going along the frame. Well, I could not get this little table to open, so maybe we'll have to do it next time. Also, this is going to be a toilet. You cannot get into it yet. 
you can bug through, but you know, I'm not going to try too hard. And this is a shower. Uh, you can't get any of the beds right now. You have the artwork, but the beds are not as latexy looking, uh, which is nice to see. And boom, voila, the beautiful, beautiful room, full kitchen, two bars, a full liquor, you know, display stand. You've got a beautiful engineer, beautifully engineered conference table, all wood flooring. Very nice. Beautiful seats that I'd even like to have in real life. They look so damn comfortable. A giant TV. That is indeed a TV. And you might say, why the fuck do you need a TV? Well, TVs in Star Citizen are going to be fully useful. Uh, there's going to be news about different things going on in the galaxy. Maybe stocks and, uh, you know, how much production value is in, you know, RSI. What chips they're making. And uh, if there's an abundance of parts, yada, yada. Right behind here, you see a beautiful jacuzzi. In this room, there's another toilet. A beautiful king-size bed that looks like it might fold over. Uh, you can tell it's not attached to the ground. It seems to be platforming. This is also a TV right here. And I saw something be displayed on this little corner. And this is a shower right here. One thing I noticed is that this is all wood floor. I noticed Tactical Advance did the same thing. Why the hell would you have a shower next to all wood floor? You're going to slip and die. Anyway... TV on the back, which makes no sense. And finally, a TV over here, which I guess you could use for analysis on maybe the cooling and the pressurization of the system. And finally, this is the same on all the constellations. I'm not sure about the Taurus or the Taurus. I know definitely the Andromeda and Aquila. We have this beautiful room. Boom. The power generator room. And where you board the P-52 Merlin. Now, you cannot board it yet, and it will be a P-72 Archimedes Kruger fighter, but for now, we don't have it. And I noticed some different little panels here, maybe, uh, but pretty much the exact same room. So, yeah, not much you can do yet uh, in terms of, you know, interactive items on the ship. But keep in mind, it's still just in the works. Now, we're going to move back. I noticed that little hatch doesn't close behind you. Uh, one little bug. But yeah, the class 9 point defense system, I looked, it seems to be either that thing right there, or it's something on top of this, or maybe it's on all four of these little wing things. Uh, I looked, it looked very interesting. You have some uh, VTOL hovering maneuver units here. Uh, you have them in the front as well. You have some thrusters on all four. You have a bigger thruster there, much larger on the top two fins. <clears throat> And uh, you notice a little bit of smaller ones on the bottom. And of course, massive skis to support this beast. Some more VTOL units here. And more VTOL units on the front. These look like flaps. Maybe they, I'm not sure what they're for. Um, this, there seems to be like this cargo bay has a different kind of way about things. It's got this whole front unit and I don't know what the fuck it's for. Maybe it's aerodynamics. Maybe it's actually for, you know, a specific, uh, I don't know, way to get rid of the uh, Lynx rover. You have the intake valves to the thrusters. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, you can tell my deluxe hangar is pretty empty. I only have this ship and I have the Hornet, which they gave us for free. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to start talking about why the fuck I got this, because a lot of people are very critical saying that it's completely pointless chi uh, ship, yada, yada, yada. And I want to talk about my organization. We'll do that one last. All right. I'll see you guys on that one. Peace. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my main thing and my main problem I have with people is always they're, they're bashing the hell out of the Phoenix Constellation. And they don't realize it has bigger guns a point defense system, and it's even got a the largest upgradable uh, power unit in the entire constellation lineup. No other constellation can go up to a unit seven. It starts with a six, which is very very powerful, and it'll be able to upgrade to a seven, which no other constellation has the ability to do. Which can mean you can have more, you know, juice for your lasers, more shields, stuff like that, and even maybe 
more possibly more powerful guns that require you to have much more power on board. And it's also to power all the luxury features inside, such as TVs, jacuzzis, and all that bullshit. And I'm going to go on to that. Now, a lot of people are saying, why the hell would you ever need that? Now, there's, there's one application I've been seeing flying around is escorting VIPs. And it specifically says it's a captain's quarters. I would love to have it because I am planning on doing the organization, which we're going to talk about in a minute here. Excuse me there. And um, what we're going to do is I'm going to have an organization and I'm going to be obviously the leader and I'm going to have a bunch of like, you know, co-founders. If you join early and you have ships, you're already pledged. You don't need to have um, any sort of pledge yet to join my organization. You can make an account and without having a pledge yet. And you are welcome to join my organization. But keep in mind, I will put you, I will place you, you tell me what you want to do in my organization. And I'm going to be explaining more about it anyway, but for now, let me justify the purchase of the Phoenix. Now, I kind of like flashy shit. I'll be real with you. Now, it doesn't need to be the most flashy, but I kind of enjoy having something different, unique, and cool looking. And this kind of fits that description. It's also a badass with the weaponry. And it's also very nice inside. And it's just a beautiful, well-made ship. Now, it comes with the Lynx Ursa Rover, which was a major reason why I bought it, and an upgraded fighter, the P-72 Archimedes. Those were the two main selling points, other than the beautiful interior, the bigger guns, and the Class 9 point defense system, which kind of acts as a trophy system that's a little bit more active. Um, if you're not aware what a trophy system is, it is a, it is a little a device that shoots explosives and missiles and things like that out of the air. Now, any kind of projectiles, really. Now, what this is going to be, the .9 class defense system, as they've said, is it takes out those missiles, and it also starts shooting fighters, too, that are within range. So, very powerful device. And hopefully, we can just start massacring all the little pirates that want to try and take my loot on the Connie. Very interesting. And, and the ship has a lot of use, and it's, very, it's limited edition, which makes it very interesting to me as well. I don't want to have the same constellation as 100,000 other people. There's only 5,000 of this model and only 800 something have sold. So really, I mean, come on. There's not gonna be very many of us around with this ship. It's gonna be very prestigious to own and I can definitely have some bragging rights. And it's gonna be pretty cool. And I feel as a leader of an organization, I do need to have a very high class ship. Makes sense, right? And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the reasons I bought it. It's a badass ship, don't knock it. Don't hate it because you don't feel like spending an extra 100 bucks, 125. If you can't buy it, so what? The Andromeda is a great ship. If you can buy it, I recommend it. I, I had buyer's remorse for the first 10 minutes, then I got inside and I started doing all this reading and I go, well, shit, this is the right ship. This is a good, good ship. Now onto my organization. I'm sorry my voice has been a little raspy lately, guys. I really don't know what the cause of it is. I, it's been a little annoying. But anyway, the, uh, wow, the the organization, I think I'm going to call it the Fly Young Gentleman. I'm going to do it plural, not singular, M-E-N. I want to do it so that that's, that's what I want to make my clans and stuff like that. And um, I really want my YouTube subscribers to join me. I want a giant organization. I want this to be a giant organization. I want to base on exploration, trading, smuggling, and even bounty hunters, but more on the legal side of things. Now, there will be, we'll see in the future what we do with the illegal type things, you know, like drug smuggling maybe, or killing high, you know, MVPs or, or uh, VIPs. But I want to be a fairly straightforward uh, organization. Now, or we're not going to have pirates or any of those dirty filth. We're going to have beautiful bounty hunters that can go take out the scum of the universe. We're going to have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful exploration units that travel in packs or teams. We're going to have trading, massive training centers. I have a friend who may spend the 15 grand and get the completionist package with an Idris. So that can be also a command center. 
But if we need a more mobile command center that moves a lot faster and we can get places a little bit easier, that's what will help my Constellation Phoenix for. So pretty much, it's I want my organization to be a big thing. I want it to be a real thing where lots of people join. I want it to be the envy of all the other organizations. I've even thought about starting up a website for it. Now, that I might wait until we get closer to the game's release. But if you're interested, even if you have an Aurora MR and a Beta Key or Alpha Key, that's all you need. You can join my organization. We don't discriminate. We already know the Aurora MR, even though it is the cheapest pledge level, is quite the ship with potential. It really has a decent amount of potential for such a cheap, small ship. So really, guys, the, the, the ceiling, there is no ceiling. The sky is limitless. The, the opportunities and the things we're going to do in this organization are limitless. I really encourage you to go and join it. I'm going to make it, as, as soon as I make it, I will put the link in the description. I'm really excited, and I really want you guys to join me, and we can have the most powerful organization. And really, there's another organization uh, and another YouTuber called Tactical Advance, a very good YouTuber, and this organization looks very successful right now. Maybe we could be friends or, you know, coexisting organizations. We'll see. You never know what happens in the future. But anyway, guys, just the fly young gentleman here. I want you to sit on that. Join my organization if you want. Even if you haven't pledged, go. Make an account. You say, you know what? First guys I join will be him. And you know what? I'll be glad with that. Anyway, guys, the fly young gentleman here. Remember to have class and get that ass. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really pumped for more to come. Peace out, guys. Have a good day.